Welcome back to Simplifying Synthesis. In this video, we are going to look at the 11 step and scalable total synthesis of Hemijarin M enabled by 5CH functionalizations. This work was published in JAX by Baiyang Zhang and Mingji Dai. Hemijarin M was first isolated in 2015 by Northcott et al. from the marine sponge Hemigera tarangaensis. Other members of this family have shown potent antiviral and anti-cancer activity and the biological activities of Hemigerin M have yet to be fully studied. There have been many synthetic studies into the construction of these molecules, prompted by their unusual ring systems and oxidation patterns. In Hemigerin M, we can see this in the presence of the fused oxazole, which is a motif rarely seen in marine natural products. It also possesses a central seven-membered ring fused to three other rings and has three contiguous stereocenters. So let's look at the strategy that the authors took to synthesize this compound. To functionalize the aromatic ring, they would use CH functionalization to install the oxygen and bromine groups. The seven-membered ring will be constructed using CH arylation and the oxazole will be installed using a 1-2 addition of methylated oxazole. The beta hydride could be installed using a hydrogen atom transfer and the methyl group introduced using an alpha methylation. To construct this lactone intermediate, they would use a Suzuki coupling and lactonization of a borylated phenol, which would also be constructed using CH activation, in this case to introduce the boron group. So let's look at the synthesis. To construct the coupling partner for the Suzuki reaction, they started with a cyclic beta keto ester. This was first deprotonated using potassium carbonate to generate an enolate, which reacted with propyl iodide, producing the quaternary centre. As it was necessary to have this propyl group on the other alpha position, they then carried out a retro dyking condensation. Sodium ethoxide reacted with the carbonyl group, generating a tetrahedral intermediate. This then fragmented, forming an ester in place of the original ketone and breaking a carbon-carbon bond to form an enolate type moiety on the original ester. A simple proton transfer and place the anion on the new ester group, which then cyclized via a dipin condensation to reproduce a beta keto ester. However, in this product, the propyl group is on a different alpha carbon to the ester group, which is a more thermodynamically favored product, as there is no steric hindrance between these two groups. Taking this product forward, the more acidic alpha proton was then deprotonated using lithium HMDS, and the enolate was triflated using triflic anhydride to generate the product in an 85% yield. With this triflate constructed, they could then generate the other coupling partner required for the Suzuki reaction. Paracresol was borylated using pinnacle borane, which served as a directing group for the ortho CH activation. This was carried out using an iridium complex featuring a diterpyridyl bipyridine ligand and several pinnacle borane ligands. This is directed to the ortho position by electrostatic interactions and allows it to activate the CH bond and thereby functionalize it with pinnacle borane. The boring group on the oxygen atom is cleaved during the workup, which produces the target in a 65% yield. With both of these coupling partners now constructed, the authors carried out a Suzuki coupling using tetricus triphenylphosphine palladium. This first undergoes an oxidative addition into the carbon triflate bond. This palladium species then undergoes a transmetallation promoted by base to leave both coupling partners bound to the palladium after the elimination of the triflate and boring groups. This palladium species undergoes a reductive elimination to couple these groups together, forming a new carbon-carbon bond. Upon completion of this coupling, the molecule underwent a spontaneous lactonization with the attack of the aromatic hydroxyl group into the ester to form the cyclic lactone in a 92% yield. At this point of the synthesis, the authors needed to reduce the carbon-carbon bond of the enone. They screened many methods and arrived at a hydrogen atom transfer method which provided the greatest stereoselectivity. This method uses a cobalt dipivaloyl methane complex, a silane, which acts as the hydride donor, and terp-butyl peroxide, which is necessary to generate the active catalyst. This transfers a hydride from the silane, first to the beta position of the enone, and then forms a radical pair, with the radical residing on the alpha position. Further reaction transfers a hydrogen atom to the same face of the molecule, and allowed the researchers to isolate a single isomer 
in a 66% yield. This alpha position was then alkylated. This formed an enolate that attacked methyl iodide to form the product in an 86% yield as a single isomer. The selectivity of this reaction was guided by steric hindrance, with the methyl group adding to the same phase of the molecule as the hydrogen atom. The researchers then turned to installing the oxazole group. They first carried out a CH functionalization on a TIPS protected oxazole, this time using N. Bewley. This forms a nucleophilic organolithium species that undergoes a 1 2 addition into the ester group to break open the lactone ring and reform the phenol. This phenol was then triflated using triflic anhydride with a yield of 79% over two steps. In the next step of the synthesis, another CH activation was carried out, this time using a zinc tetramethylpapyridine chloride complex. This is a methylation reagent capable of functionalizing very sensitive molecules, and in this case, selectively inserted into the carbon-hydrogen bond of the oxazole ring. This formed a methylated species that could undergo a Nagishi coupling together with the triflated aromatic ring to form the central seven-membered ring in a 48% yield over two steps. To carry out this Nagishi coupling, the researchers use a third-generation Buchwald catalyst. Similar to the Suzuki coupling, this starts off with an oxidative addition into the carbon triflet bond, and then undergoes a transmethylation, in this case with the zinc species of the oxazole ring, eliminating zinc triflate in the process. This undergoes a reductive elimination to form the new carbon-carbon bond, and complete the construction of the central seven-membered ring. As the oxazole functionalization was now complete, the TIPS group was deprotected using hydrochloric acid in an 86% yield, and the molecule was then taken forward to another borelation reaction, this time a directed CH activation using a rhodium catalyst. This activation is directed to the ortho position by coordination to the oxazole ring, and utilizes an unusual reagent, which is a silica particle that is functionalized on its surface to be able to coordinate the metal catalyst by incorporating a silicon constrained monodentate trialkylphosphine. The researchers found that the reaction was greatly improved by the addition of one octene. This octene can act as a scavenger and mop up excess borohydride species. They discovered this by noticing that a lot of the byproducts obtained from this reaction contain an alcohol, resulting from the reduction of the ketone. They attributed this to the formation of borohydride species and hence the octene is able to inhibit this by reacting with these borohydride species before they can react with the ketone. This product was taken forward without purification and was directly oxidized using oxone to introduce the hydroxyl group in a 50% yield over two steps. With this installed, they then moved on to the final reaction, which was to install the bromine. To do this, they used pyridinium tribromate. This undergoes an electrophilic aromatic substitution in the position ortho to the hydroxyl group. This produced the target hemigerin M in a 72% yield, along with 12% of the parabrominated product. This preference for ortho substitution comes from the electron donating hydroxyl group, which increases the nucleophilicity of the position ortho to it. Well, that brings us to the end of another total synthesis. In particular, this synthesis highlighted the utility of CH activations, which were used to construct carbon-carbon bonds, install hydroxyl groups, and install borane groups. We saw these directed by nitrogen coordination and oxygen borelation to provide the regiochemical control necessary to form the challenging product. This really highlights the utility of these modern methods, which allow for transformations that were impossible in the golden era of total synthesis, when chemists like Bob Woodward and Gilbert Stork pioneered the synthesis of natural products using chemical synthesis. Well that's everything for this week's Simplifying Synthesis. If you enjoy these videos, please like and subscribe, and if you have anything you'd like to see, let me know in the comments down below. I'll be back next week where we will look at the total synthesis of Juju Yane.